Hello and welcome back to Green Country Baits. We've got a uh, special, I guess you'd call it a paint session, but we are going to really dive in and give you an in-depth lesson on how to match a bait. Uh, I had this bait sent to me. It's an old shad wrap. <clears throat> Not sure the color of uh, or what the descriptive name is of this color, uh, but a customer wants me to match it. And this is an older bait. Uh, it's faded. Had the opportunity to match a lot of baits and got a lot of experience in doing that. And I'm just going to give you a detailed explanation of how I look at this pattern, what I do in order to try to attempt to get that as close to that original, or in this case, this old faded color, uh, as I can per customer request. So uh, if that sounds like something interesting to you, come on, join in. Okay, so matching a lure, in-depth lesson on how we do it, or at least from my perspective, how I go about matching this particular shad wrap. In this case, we're going to be eventually putting it on this uh, Strike King uh, uh, shad wrap type bait. Uh, but just uh, kind of a thought process, just take you through it. This may be a little bit longer video. Uh, my GoPro's acting up, uh, and I've got a heater, electric heater running in the background. I'm out here in the garage, so a little bit cool today on this January day, but uh, anyway, wanted to give you a, uh, a perspective on, you know, how I see this bait when somebody asks me to match a particular pattern, what goes through my mind. So, very first thing and most uh, identifying uh, color uh, or two colors that just immediately stand out to you. I'm going to tell you, I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up, but these, this, this, this side color or the base color of this lure, one of two things, either has a full background or these are metallics, very pearlescent type colors. It's got very reflective properties to the paint. So... Again, a couple of ways to get to that, whether you put an aluminum base on this or a full base or a chrome base uh, type lure, or just use metallic or iridescent type pearlescent paints. Okay, that's a mouthful right there. Uh, at first glance, I would have kind of thought from a distance that this was a gold uh, color, uh, and but to me, it's really not. It's... Uh, it's a muted yellow. It's a uh, type of yellow base uh, that's, you know, got, a, got some white in it. So we could mix something up and we'll show you how we go about that. Uh, belly color is just a canary yellow to me. Uh, it's an orangish yellow stripe on it. We, uh, the most other most dominant color is this back color. Um, as I look at that, we're going to first try some type of red oxide or burnt sienna, something like that. It is a reddish brown looking uh, back color to me. Okay, we've got a little dark uh, gill plate indentions. We've got a little turquoise or bluish green dot. Don't know if that was original to the bait or not. It's not on both sides. Um, and then we've got a little bit of a detail scale pattern. And... As I look into the back of it, it looks like that may be some type of gold or may have been the yellow that was uh, resprayed. Uh, the sides are some type of silver, grayish type little scale pattern on it. Okay, it's got the shad dot. Um, so that's just initial thoughts. Now, the next thing we have to do is we load up an airbrush and we try to get, you know, these two most dominant color patterns, which are the most apparent to anybody fish or human that's looking at trying to buy one of these off the shelf 
And uh, so I think what I'm going to do initially is just look into some metallics. Uh, what I've got out here is my jacquard. I've got a metallic yellow and I've got a metallic white and yellow is the primary. So, you know, let me turn my compressor on. And we'll just put a few drops of yellow in. One, two, three, four. May just be me, but I, I, I work in fours. <laughs> Okay, I, I don't know what that is, but obviously, and if you guys know what this color pattern is called, uh, leave me a comment below. You know, I've got OG, I always use a sheet of paper uh, when I'm doing this, and uh, we'll do some, some spraying, and we're first working on this, and and as you can tell, that's just, that's just too yellow, right? So... The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add one drop of metallic white. So, you know, I'll just make myself a little note right here that this is metallic yellow. Um, and then you got to spray a little bit. And then I'll come right below that. And we'll go metallic yellow, oh, that was four, and metallic white, one. And we just do a comparison. I'm going to try two. Drops of metallic white. We'll mix that up good in our airbrush cup. And this is, this is why it takes so long. I probably should charge more to match baits than I do just to paint particular patterns, but I do so many of them. And it's just how I started uh, in custom painting my own lures. So, not a lot of difference, right? Four, metallic white. Two. We'll add another drop of metallic white. This is the process. I mean, you've got to, if you really want to know what it takes to get those particular colors, and the camera may not pick this up, but I think it's four to three looks pretty good. So it's just almost a 50-50 mix, just a little more yellow than it is white. But we've got to add an entirely different thing into the mix. Is it a full base? And the way I replicate that is I use this aluminum base for auto air. I don't know if they still make this or not. And okay, just like we had base coated the, the lure. Okay, and we've got our four to three yellow. You can so now what would that yellow look like over that silver silver base now you can see ah well i don't know I, I think you could tell that obviously that darkens that just a little bit with us using the aluminum base but it is much more reflective so i I definitely think that that's a, a starting point for us, and it looks extremely close, extremely close. And you're going to have some differences when you're spraying this stuff on paper, when you're spraying this on on uh, on this particular lure. So, 
depends on what light you know as you reflect it you can obviously see that the uh, background comes into play you can see that uh, aluminum base underneath on this white but when the light hits it that's about as close as you can get so i feel pretty confident that that's at least a starting point for us uh, so i'm going to put aluminum base and then we're going to use our four to three metallic yellow and white okay to get that all right I'll clean out this airbrush with the yellow in it and we'll work on the back color next again i to me it it, it looks like a red oxide yeah. now we're going to have to compare whether or not we have a aluminum base under it and what that's going to do or do we need to leave that off of the top of the bait so first up Createx wicked red oxide okay so that's going to basically represent two one to two coats okay so we're trying to look at the side colors as well as the top is a little darker so we could we could represent that by by doing Four or five coats. <clears throat> Let's take a look, guys. Very close. Very, very close. So, I also want to see what that's going to look like with a aluminum base coat underneath it. Go ahead and put us another one down right next to this. So that we can do a one or two coat. What that's going to look like with that aluminum underneath it. Well, let's come back with. Oh gosh, we got a run. So let's take a look with the aluminum base. It does darken that just a little bit. Side color. So just the edge of these shoulders is not near as dark as this stripe right down the back. Um, go two coats. I think that's really good. So that's a real strong possibility. Now I'm going to clean my airbrush out and we don't want to 
guess without trying what we thought at the initial view of whether it's a red sienna or excuse me a red oxide or a burnt sienna because they're very close they're just burnt sienna is a little bit darker okay so we've got again wicked line burnt sienna and we'll go down just below that put a few drops of burnt sienna in okay and before i forget so we got aluminum base two coats of red oxide aluminum base four coats red oxide okay and this is just red oxide one coat could be one or two coats and this is red oxide four to five coats okay so next up we're going to look at burnt sienna One to two coats. Four, five. Five coats. Two, three, four, five. <clears throat> okay, so let's do a comparison here. You can tell these two colors are very, very, very similar. I mean, it's just, there's a little more brown in this burnt sienna than in this red oxide. But on paper, they do not look much different. I mean, do not look much different. Back color. This one's a little bit darker. I think this matches that stripe on the back, the very top of this particular lure. Uh... I really didn't get enough. When I move the paper and light, it, it, it definitely has some reflective parper properties here. I don't think you can, we could miss on either one. Do you? Let me know what you think. I, Red oxide and burnt sienna are nearly identical on white paper. Now, it de depends on whether we're gonna go with a white base underneath this or whether we're gonna go with an aluminum base underneath this, okay? So I just think by looking <clears throat> I don't have an, if I had a metallic red, red oxide, uh, I think this would be it. Now, I think that the, because the aluminum base darkens it a little bit, one, I could cut it down to one coat um, if I can get coverage with, with that. Same up here. 
but and this is a metallic colors here but the aluminum base underneath it when you move it in the light is much more like this one but just like i said a little bit darker so we are going to make a run with that uh the next thing we've got to do is is look at uh our belly stripe which i'm going to either use a canary or a sun gold again those are extremely close to each other uh, it's not going to be as detrimental or or i shouldn't say that it's not going to be as difficult to uh, find uh, and be able to get to that belly striping on the very belly of the lure as it is the side covers but it does make a big difference in its fishability you know does it catch fish or does it not okay so first one we picked out and the reason i picked it out is just looking at that i mean depending on the shade see now this is lighter now i've had this standing on its end so that represents a couple of extra coats that could be it or this canary color what do you guys think i kind of leading to canary it's got a little more orange in it so let's spray that and this comes out extremely yellow at first so it always takes several coats See that? That's not even close, right? Yeah, I think that's going to get there. What do you guys think? You, half time I get my wife in here to look at it. So guys and gals, uh, I'm thinking that. Now we could come up and we could take an orange and uh, also uh, any kind of, you know, just a transparent orange or a detail orange and uh, add a little white to it and work backwards or a little white and yellow. But uh, because we've got yellow here, The very center of that where we hit that i think it would need to go one more coat and dry it in between those coats so we're talking three coats dried that's our color Okay, so canary yellow, three dry coats. I don't have a lot of concern with uh, the, the little spot on the tail. Again, I don't know if it was original to the bait or if uh, somebody along the lines had, we're talking about that little spot right there. But it's either blue green or or some type of turquoise. Uh, we have a just Creatix transparent turquoise, and we're gonna we're gonna do a comparison. 
right on the money. So simple, simple deal there. Other colors that we see in that is obviously the black of the scaling. Uh, and don't really have to work through that too much. Like most generally, I would I still have a little bit of concern over whether or not we're yellow or if we're gold. So we're going to break out. Now this won't look as good uh, on this back color. I, I've just got to do it. I'm OCD that way. I want this to be identical. And sometimes it takes paint a bait, doesn't work out. Paint another one in order to get where you want to go. So I'm going to put a little black. Now this is a black magenta, a purplish black. Um, and we're going to... You really need a gloss black for this chrome. But that was laying there, so guess what? We're going to, we're going to use it. So I've got uh, Critix Easy Chrome Gold. And I just want to give you, the viewers, I eliminated it from the get-go just because I think it's some form of yellow on that side color. But so that you can tell, I want to just show you what a gold looks like and we'll compare it. Now we can do gold right here. Gold with some white. Okay, so we've got our our yellows. We've got our yellow with, these damn hooks are in the way. We've got our yellows with the aluminum base behind it. Then we've got our chrome gold. It's pretty damn close. And then we get our chrome gold. With a white base. And I don't know if this picks up on camera very well, but again, that's close. This color is, it's one of those colors that's kind of tough to sometimes figure out. It's, uh, uh, I have, I, I truly believe that we're going to try an aluminum base and we're going to put that metallic yellow and white down and, and roll with it. And I think we could do some gold tipping on the scales at the top. Uh, I'm having just as much of a difficult problem with the, the red oxide or the burnt sienna. I mean, those two colors, <laughs> it could be either one of those. They are so close together. Well, let's write that down. Now, this is just, uh, what do we call that? Uh, we tried a little Quicksilver Chrome, Quicksilver Gold Chrome with uh, black underneath and then white underneath with Quicksilver Gold Chrome. Uh, and this <coughs> was burnt. Sienna and burnt sienna. That's one to two coats. That's three, four to five coats. This is with the aluminum base. Uh, burnt sienna, one to two. Burnt sienna, four to five. <clears throat> It's 
just got that's that's dang close but it, it's just more yellow than that gold it's just got more yellow in it i don't know if you can tell it but that's too yellow that's why i say we have to have some type of black or a, i would say black that that aluminum or a chrome uh background or that aluminum base so you guys tell me what you think but this is how i go about matching a bait i get it all the time i mean you know some think i'm pretty good at it there's others out there that maybe they just keep it to themselves and don't say much of anything but um it takes a great deal of time when someone sends me in a lure like this and i've got many on there in fact i'm thinking about creating a new playlist that's just all my match baits uh, i got into this matching wiggle warts back when they discontinued those or i had old baits and the new ones were junk when they first come out and I wanted them in some particular color patterns, so I started matching them, started working through that, and uh, kind of grew into this little online business that we have. But, but anyway, uh, it takes a great amount of time. Uh, guys, let me know what you think. Uh, the next video we'll do after this is me painting this particular pattern. But that's how we go again, go about matching an OG pattern, guys. Uh, until next week, Green Country Baits, signing out.